Hey everyone, Dan with Mac Rumors, and in this video, we're going to take a look at five new Mac applications for the month of May 2018. Our first application is a really simple but potentially useful tool for those who want to quickly jot down some reminders but need to constantly see them in order to remember that you wrote these reminders down in the first place. Thought Train is a reminder app that lives in your Mac status bar. And by simply clicking on the logo and entering in your note, and depending on how many reminders you have, the status bar will either statically show you your note or scroll through your list. This might seem like it could be distracting at first, but it really isn't. You'll definitely notice the scrolling notes from time to time, which is kind of the point, but I doubt that it would be a constant distraction. The app is as free as you want it to be, as the developer has set up a pay what you want price tag, and of course, I will leave a link to this and all other applications in the description down below. Keeping things simple is also a theme for our next application, which can be found in the Mac App Store, and that is Friendly for Netflix. Friendly for Netflix has one major feature that the web app doesn't, and it does its job pretty well. At this current moment in time, there's really no built-in way to access picture-in-picture -picture mode when watching Netflix in Safari, unlike YouTube, which will allow picture-in-picture -picture by right-clicking the video twice and selecting it from the menu. Friendly for Netflix allows for a picture-in-picture -picture mode and a few other features like Rotten Tomatoes ratings in a browser-style application. If you want to multitask while watching Netflix, this is really the main reason why you should download this free application. Stamp is an app that can be useful if you're looking to switch from one music streaming service provider to another and don't want to lose your library or playlists. Unfortunately, the switch is not yet compatible from Spotify to Apple Music, but you can do Apple Music to Spotify if you wish. For this example, I exported my Spotify Mix playlist over to Google Play Music, as I have a free Google Play Music subscription available from YouTube Red, and I've yet to take advantage of that perk. The app was able to transfer over all but five of the songs from the playlist, and I was able to export a spreadsheet of the songs that were unable to transfer for reference. When I opened Google Play Music, my once Spotify playlist has now been transferred over. The app is free to start, but there is a song transfer limit, and so the one-time fee for either desktop, iOS, or Android, or the extra fee for the bundle is well worth the price if you have a lot of songs to transfer. Speaking of transferring, if you plug in your iPhone into your computer a lot, and maybe back up your phone or transfer images to and from your device a lot, the app iMazing is here to make your life a heck of a lot easier. The app is very clean and intuitive and makes managing your iPhone backups really easy. In fact, you can access all of your photos, messages, call history, voicemail, notes, and more, and see them directly within the iMazing app. The conversations show up in a conversation style, and it's very easy to find which data that you'd like to keep in your backups and what you can get rid of. Managing your phone's data and transferring files is so much easier with this app, and I highly recommend using it, especially if you have a lot of pictures that you need to transfer to a different computer or want to move these files quickly and easily. Finally, our last app is called Power Menu, and it's aimed to help make managing files in Finder a lot easier. The app has a ton of pre-made commands and options available, or you can write your own script, create specific folders, etc., in order to help customize the way you manage your files. I move files from my desktop to other folders quite a bit, especially video files to an external hard drive, and so I've created specific folder paths that I would have Power Menu help transfer those files to. Once everything is set up, simply right-click on the file that you want to work with, and within the apps menu you'll notice options like Create New File, Move to Folder, Copy to Folder, Open a New Finder Window, Compress with Password, Send an Email, and many more. In this example, I want to move these files to a different folder. Once I hover over that option, I can see all the folder paths that I've created within the app and choose my destination. This app has a ton of power behind it and can make transferring files over to a hard drive or different folder paths a breeze. As always, let us know what apps you recommend in the comment section down below, and we might feature that app in next month's episode. This has been Dan with MacRumors. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one.